Hey, what is up all you techno fans? And by techno, I do mean technology. I think I've used that joke before. But that's okay because there's nothing redundant on YouTube. Everything is absolutely original. In the past, I've done a couple videos about how to overclock your graphics card and how to overclock your CPU, both Intel and AMD and all that good stuff. But recently people have been asking me, well, what effect does VRAM have on your overclock? Does increasing your VRAM actually give you better performance? Does it give you better frames per second? Does it cook you breakfast in the morning? Uh, well, that actually depends if it's an AMD or an Nvidia card, but I, I, I digress. So what we're gonna talk about today is the correlation of VRAM and how it affects your performance. And obviously we're gonna be using my NV surround setup behind me with my 780s in SLI, two-way SLI. Now the configuration behind me is running in 5760 by 1080p. So what that's gonna allow us to do is not only check how VRAM affects uh, you know, the overall performance and frames per second of those monitors, but it's also going to allow us to see how close we're getting to the VRAM cap. Because the two things that you constantly hear about with VRAM is one, you have to have a whole bunch of it if you're gonna run a high resolution, and two, that you need to have super fast VRAM when you're doing ultimate gaming or high resolution gaming. Now I'm really gonna only be using two benchmarks for this particular test, and that's gonna be both Valley Benchmark because it's gonna give us a hard number that we can see both minimum, maximum, and average frames per second uh, over a synthetic benchmark. And then we're gonna hop in some Battlefield 4 and we're gonna look at average frame rates in there with different settings on the VRAM uh, speed. And uh, with you guys, I'm gonna find out what the actual results are. Believe it or not, I've done lots of overclock benchmarking when it comes to uh, core but I've never actually done any standalone RAM tests to see exactly what the hard differences are. So we're gonna learn together. And together is just the way I like to do these things. This is weird, I don't even know why I said that. Okay guys, we're back now and I have spent the last couple of hours uh, going over these benchmarks again and again and again, trying out different things, making sure I get my baselines and trying to bring you guys the most accurate results that I could. Now bear in mind, this is my setup specific to my graphics cards, how they perform, my surround setup and you know, your results may vary. I mean, this is all based on my GPU, my CPU, my motherboard, my cooling. So your results may vary. So keep in mind, these are my results. They're not the definitive, you know, all inclusive for every situation in the world type of results. Now for the first test, uh, as I mentioned, I did Valley Benchmark, which I find to be the most consistent way of measuring even small changes when it comes to your system. Games like behind me, there's a lot of things that are always happening. Explosions at different times, different things being rendered, different parts of the map, different player interactions, explosions and jets and choppers and boats. Lots of different variables which can really make the outcome different every single time. So it makes it very difficult to baseline. So that's why we use Valley Benchmark to kind of do our side-by-side -side comparisons. Now for Valley Benchmark results, this is for one monitor, not surround, just one monitor. And I found that to be uh, pretty much the most consistent way to measure the differences. Because again, with surround, there's gonna be a lot of different changes there. Now when it comes to the Valley Benchmark results, uh, there's a lot of numbers here. Um, just kind of look at the chart and let that be a little bit more of a visual aid to the numbers I'm gonna give you here. Now at no overclock whatsoever on the GPU or the RAM, uh, that's 1006 megahertz on the GPU clock uh, and the uh, 6000 effective megahertz on the RAM. Uh, three gigabytes of RAM, we are getting a score of 4569, an average of 109.2 frames per second with a min max of 41.7 and a maximum of 193. Now, utilized RAM on that was 1,316 megahertz or 43.87% utilized RAM at one monitor. Now that's expected results because we are talking about one screen with three or one 1080p panel with uh, you know three gigabytes of RAM, that's more than enough. Now when you overclock just the memory and you leave the core where it's at, our score jumps up to a 47.11. That's a jump of about 140 points and a minimum or an average of 112.6 frames per second. That's a three frames per second uh, average jump right there. So that's just by overclocking the RAM 500 megahertz or one gigahertz effective. So going from six gigs to seven gigs netted us uh, only a couple of percent of an overclock or increase in performance there. 
uh, and that's about three frames per second, 3.4 frames per second average increase by moving the slider on the RAM one extra gigahertz. And that's a utilized percentage of 44.56% utilized of the three gigs. Now, when we overclock the GPU and we leave the memory at stock speeds, we were getting a 5151 score. Uh, that's a couple hundred, uh, about 400 point jump, 440 point jump. Uh, and our average FPS jumped from 112 to 123 inside of Valley Benchmark. So you can see, obviously, we got the most result by overclocking our GPU, even by leaving the RAM stock. Now, if we go ahead and overclock our VRAM, our score jumped from a 5151 to a 5449 and an average FPS of 130.2. So that's adding another 7.1 frames per second by adding an additional RAM overclock to the GPU. Now what's happening there is your GPU is getting faster. The RAM has to get faster to keep up with it. So that's why we're seeing kind of these linear uh, increases in performance by moving those sliders. Now let's go oh, and utilize RAM again, 1,315 uh, megabytes at 43.82% utilized. That's pretty much baseline because the synthetic benchmark's not really changing and we're only using one panel. Okay, now let's go ahead and take these exact same scores and bring them over to Battlefield 4. Now the first thing I wanna go ahead and address is at 5760 by 1080p at Ultra Preset, which is you know MSAA and everything on the max, we were utilizing all three gigabytes of our VRAM. Now I wanna point something out here before we move forward. Now this is the part that I don't really find surprising. I guess I'm a little bit surprised that we did utilize all three gigahertz or three uh, gigs of RAM. I didn't think it would cap out, but I think what's happening here is the utilization of RAM in these graphics cards has progressed to the point to where they're very dynamic and the game will use as much RAM as available to it if it feels that it needs it but you're not gonna start experiencing crashing or blue screens or anything like that by capping out your RAM. Because the entire time I played, I was capped out at 3,004 megabytes utilized RAM in Battlefield 4 on both GPUs, just straight across the board, completely capped, but I wasn't getting stutters, I wasn't getting slowdowns, I was getting very smooth frame rates. Now, if I brought that down to one screen, I was getting about 1,950 uh, megabytes used of RAM. Now, here's the part where I think it's a little bit surprising, is use, utilizing uh, Battlefield 4 with my old 680, which was a two gigabyte card, I was use, utilizing about 1,400 megabytes of that RAM. So by going to a faster and more uh, robust GPU like the 780, the game recognized, hey, we've got more potential here, so we're gonna utilize more of the hardware. So that's the part that I found kind of surprising. The programming in these games is a lot more dynamic where it recognizes what you have and then goes ahead and increases the utilized hardware to give you better performance overall. So that's the part I didn't expect, but I can tell you right now, running three screens with three gigabyte cards, they did cap out the RAM, but I did not have any adverse effects. Those rumors of if you cap, if you utilize all the RAM, you're gonna you're gonna blue screen and you're gonna get kicked out of the game and you're gonna get huge spikes and stutters. Didn't get any of that, guys. So it just means that the memory controllers of these GPUs are a lot more intelligent than a lot of people give them credit for. Okay, enough about that. Let's go ahead and talk about the frames per second increase. Uh, when it comes to Battlefield 4 at base settings with um, SLI enabled, we were getting an average of 80 frames per second in ultra preset. When we went ahead and bumped that up to uh, stock GPU speed and one gigahertz overclock on the RAM, we did gain three frames per second average for an 83. Bumping up the overclock on the GPU to 1350 megahertz and leaving the RAM stock at six gigahertz, we got a 92 frames per second average in SLI on three screens. And then going ahead and overclocking both to the max, 1350 megahertz, seven gigahertz on the RAM, we got 95 frames per second average when it came to uh, both graphics cards and three screens. So there you go, guys. These are my results, um, basically, the more VRAM, the better, but if you don't have quite enough, as you can see, the game will go ahead and the graphics cards, rather, will self-manage the memory and they'll just make best use of what they have available to them without kicking you out of the game or crashing or anything like that. So there you go. Uh, you can see very, 
modest increases by overclocking your VRAM, but obviously the grunt of all of your performance gains is gonna come from the overclock ability or the luck of the GPU lottery that you get when it comes to overclocking your graphics cards. So what are you guys, your guys' results? What kind of performance have you seen by moving those sliders on your graphics card? AMD, Nvidia, sound off down in the, in the comments down there and let people know what kind of performance gains you're getting by uh, tweaking and having some fun with those graphics cards. Guys, I'm gonna get on out of here, maybe enjoy some games. And as always, follow me on Twitter if you guys wanna talk about today's video, take it over to the website, jace2cents.com, and I will see you in my next video.